Hello everyone and welcome to this video on Dark Souls. This format is going to be similar to my Some Thoughts On videos, but since I'm only going to be talking about the game and level design in this video, I thought I'd save the Thoughts videos for when I talk about other things as well, like graphic styles or general ideas in games. Uh, but today the focus is going to be Dark Souls and some of my things that I think are pretty weird or just some things that could be improved as well as some things that are amazing already. Uh, just like I didn't talk about most of the mechanics in StarCraft, I'm not going to talk much about the general uh, swordplay in Dark Souls because it's obviously amazing because otherwise no one would ever play this game. Um, but some things that I've recorded in this video here. Um, the first issue I have is the blind selection in RPGs and especially in Dark Souls because uh, for anyone who's played it Dark Souls is probably the least class-based uh, RPG out there. As you can see here there are a ton of different classes to choose from but after like 20 minutes or so in the game you pretty much are able to pick up any of all all these classes items or their skills and from that point you can basically do whatever you want with the game so it's pretty weird to me that they still included this in the game um, you could have had some sort of um, even more accessible start where it's even easier to pick up the catalyst for the sorceries or the uh, the pyromancy glove or stuff like that and the the biggest problem with this is that the first time you play a game you don't really have any sort of uh, thoughts on what the different classes do because playing as a pyromancer in Dark Souls um, it's pretty different from playing a uh, sorcerer for instance because the pyromancies are really short ranged you have to be at pretty much melee range to begin with and most of the damage you do is going to be with a sword or similar weapon anyway. So the first time you play uh, I don't really see why they don't just pop you into the game and this second the gift here um, is also pretty weird in my opinion um, because every single playthrough after the first one I've chosen the master key and as far as I know everyone uses it um, for instance, like the humanities here do pretty much nothing. The binoculars do even less and just allow you to watch things from afar. Um, I think it's the old witch's ring which actually does nothing because they just put it in as a troll to the players and the tiny being's ring with which regenerates some health. Um, so I'd actually recommend them to just get rid of the classes altogether. Um, sure, you start with a few different stats, but the first, first few levels, like the first 10 levels, you can basically get from just the first area. I'm not 100% sure on the numbers here, but as a general idea. Um, the second part is that there is no tutorial in Dark Souls, and I really, really like this. Um, instead, what they have you start a new character here and uh, you run out of the cell oh, I'm just showing you the cell and there are these sort of notes on the ground uh, for anyone who hasn't played the game players can leave these sort of notes as well and there is no visual distinction between the developer notes and the player notes uh, so in a few different areas there are actually developer notes or hints that will let you um, pick up things easier and for some reason I have recorded the mouse as well so if you see more than one uh, just ignore it um, so at the start here you just get these sort of control hints um, and you get non-aggressive really weak enemies uh, as you can see he's not even attacking me uh, so you can't die from these as far as I know um, and then you have the strong attacks um, one thing I could uh, recommend is that if players actually do something you could remove the 
the notes on the ground, like they fade away once you shown that you you know it. So uh, once you start running into uh, player notes, you know that you have to read them before they disappear. Because some people are assholes and put them at the top of ladders and stuff like that. So just to just to remove them, you can. I mean, dashing is, yeah, sure. Um, so the basic notes is your tutorial, pretty much. Um, and then you get thrown into the first boss fight, I suppose, here. And here is where uh, I think Dark Souls has the biggest problem, in my opinion. Some players say that this is what makes the game amazing. Uh, but the problem is that um, Dark Souls teaches you things that aren't applicable to anywhere else in the game. For instance, this um, this first boss fight here, like you can dodge him and you can hit him, and as you see, I do two damage for a general sword stab, and he has I don't know, let's say 1500 HP, something. So you can dodge him, and even though you, if you play perfectly, you can probably kill him. Um, you actually shouldn't, because it's fast as you just go around and pick up a real weapon. Um, but in the first place here, you get to learn that you're supposed to run from bosses, basically. Or you're supposed to use your environment. The problem is, it's just this guy. There is one more boss, uh, Ceaseless dis Discharge, which uh, we're running is actually also an option. but. Other than that, there is no other boss in the game that allows you to run from them. Uh, okay, maybe Seath as well. Uh, I don't really remember. I don't think I've ever run from him. Um, so, um, there are really these things in Dark Souls, like, for instance, uh, Four Kings. It's a boss fight, and it's the only place in the game where you're supposed to fall down. Every place else, you will fall to your death, but at one place in the game wearing one exact item you can fall without dying uh, which is really weird design in my opinion because it feels a bit like 90s adventure games um, where you have to try these all sorts of weird things out sure you can pick up a few uh, hints here and there but i actually would never have found the four kings if i hadn't gone and watched videos on the internet, um, which is pretty weird. Um, there is also just one place in the game that you're supposed to die, um, which is the first encounter with Seath the Scaleless. Um, so I really don't like these sort of one-off um, uh, game mechanics, where the game wants you to know this one thing, like on the first boss, you're supposed to run from him. And then you never can again. Um, I suppose you can run some from the Capper Demon, and you can do the sort of falling attacks from the first boss on uh, both the Taurus and the Capper Demon. Um, so one-time mechanics is pretty weird, in my opinion. Um, there are people who love this, like, oh, I, do you know what I did on this boss, and uh, etc., telling the story, but. I generally don't like it. Uh, on the other hand, in this next clip here, I will be talking about the level design, because the first area here is actually brilliant. Um, so this is the bonfire you start at when you finish the the first area with the first boss here. And when you see me start looking around here, there is one thing here that is really brilliant, and it's this item over here, because it shows you a white uh, sort of bright object. All of the items in the game looks like this. And in this place, the Firelink Shrine, there are tons of different places you can go. Um, you can go down uh, the stairs here. I will just be running around and showing you. So you can go down the stairs here. You will get eventually to the elevator going down to New Londo Ruins and the Drake Valley. Um, the second place you can go is the catacombs, uh, which I'm showing here, which is 
hidden away as well as the the stairs down to uh, New Londo. I'll just back it up to the um, to the bonfire here. I'm hoping. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, they've hidden away the the first entrance to another area, or what you want to call it, the stairs down here. They've hidden away the second place to um, to the catacombs. First by this wall here. Then, if you go up the stairs, it's even hidden away behind a sort of pillar and a doorway, which you can't see through because the wall is so thick. Um, so you really have to explore to find these places. But if you're a new player, you're more likely to go for the obvious item hanging over the the well here, which will show you the way to the, uh, I don't know if you want to call it the beginner area, but it's the easiest area in the early parts of the game. What this does is it leads players to the uh, to the easiest area first, even though they have really no idea where to go because the game doesn't give you the obvious uh, waypoints and stuff like that. Uh, so even though it allows you to go wherever you want, it will still lead new players towards the uh, the stairs here. I'd actually say that if you... Uh, I'm just gonna move into Photoshop here and paste this image and boom. So if you move down the skeletons, there are actually skeletons up here. Uh, you can see the head of one here. If you just move down the the skeletons, add the platform right here, and yeah, let's put a skeleton dude here with a sword. So if you just put him here instead, it would be even more blatantly obvious where new players are supposed to go because you lead the eye first the the pickup here, which is white, and then the skeletons and players would move up here. So that's, it's just a thought. It's brilliant design to begin with, but this would make it even more obvious. Uh, so going back to the video, I will be moving on. So I'm just showing you, this is where players go. And allowing players to explore is basically the brilliance behind Dark Souls. It's the core mechanics and it's the ability to go wherever you want. Basically, it's a hub design similar to the Starcraft one where it opens up paths and it doesn't tell you that you have to do things in a certain order it just allows you to go wherever you want and if you can't kill something come back later. Um, in this case um, let's see here yeah so this is just showing off the the general level design as well what it does is that it creates these sort of shortcuts that once you reach a certain area you're able to kick down the ladder in this case. Um, I actually did it before I started recording so you can't see it here but this bonfire you you reach it earlier in the game and then you kick down the ladder and you're able to use it as a shortcut. Uh, so using these bonfires which heal you as well as reset the enemies uh, using the shortcuts they are able to use these bonfires for several different areas. Uh, this one actually works for one um, additional area, uh, the depths, which you reach even later. Uh, so I will bring up the, uh, the Photoshop again and I will show you the area map which I got from the Dark Souls wiki. Um, so where you start out is the Firelink Shrine here in the middle. No, actually, this is where you start out, Undead Asylum. And for some reason I have a pen instead of a brush. Uh, so you start out in the Undead Asylum and you're able to go back there once you reach uh, the elevator. So you get to Firelink Shrine. The first road that I show you, which was hidden away, is the one leading to New Londo Ruins, so this one. That's the stairs behind the tree. Then you have the catacombs, which is the stairs behind the pillar with the thick walls. And then you have the obvious one, Undeadburg, 
which has the white item. So once you get to Undeadburg, you can go to Undead Parish, which then opens up the shortcut, which is an elevator here, uh, back to Firelink Shrine. So as you can see, there are many different shortcuts between different areas in the game. And once you reach the Firelink Shrine, you can go to nearly all of them, except for uh, yeah, the ones marked in the pink here, uh, Great King's Sealed Place. So Tomb of the Giants, Demon Ruins, and the Duke's Archives, which are closed off from the beginning. Um, and Orlando is kind of tricky to get to as well, but I suppose you could get there, because there are many things you have to run through to get there, but you get there eventually. So shortcuts is a good thing, because it allows the players to uh, to backtrack, which means that they, are, they e more easily find their place in the game, and it creates this sort of world instead of just having separate levels. You could create something where you basically teleport between levels, like the original Demon Souls game. You basically have your hub, and then you're able to teleport to the maps. But this creates more of a world where the player is able to roam around, which is a cooler design, basically. You could do it either way. If you run into hardware limitations, for instance, you could do the, the Demon Souls version. Um, so in the next clip here, uh, I will be talking more about the level design, because um, Dark Souls is an interesting game in that the places where the level design is most obvious, like Sen's Fortress and uh, Blight Town as well, I suppose, um, the level design influences the game in bad ways, pretty much, because the core mechanics of the game uh, is the sword play. If you take something like uh, a shooter game or a game of Starcraft and put them in an entirely blank map, like there are no cliffs, there are nothing that influences the gameplay, those games would be really boring instantly. But if you took Dark Souls and put it in an entirely blank map, you would still pretty much have the same game, because at least 90% of the bosses, except for Capra Demon and Ornstein and Smo, for instance, um, the level design doesn't really have an impact on any of the boss fights. Um, most of it is about just the fighting, but in some cases, obviously, the the width of the fighting area changes the game. So in this game, in this case, I mean, I will be fighting a uh, knight down here, really badly, I might add. Um, so as you can see, the area here is pretty narrow, which means that rolling is a pretty bad idea. Uh, I'm just waking him up, and he's actually moving even further. Um, so in the narrow passages, what you reduce to is that you will be generally fighting badly because you can't roll. You will have to parry, or just get chopped like I do here. Um, so parrying becomes better as the areas become closer, but the newer players, it, like when you get to this place the first time, you're not going to be able to kill this guy. I promise you that, um, because he's pretty strong. So um, I will just move the video back again. One of the whoops, too short. So one of the things you can do is pull the knight up the stairs here and you will be able to fight him. So you will have the same encounter but in a more open area. And I actually think that this is one of the uh, like one of the few places where pulling enemies is actually useful because in the most places like they figure out that fighting in a more open space is easier and it's more fun etc. So this is not really a game where level design applies. It's more about creating the um, the obvious spaces, building the world, etc., which is brilliantly done. But the the low level level design, when it comes to the core, you don't really want to influence the gameplay because the core mechanics is what the, this game is all about, and the levels themselves shouldn't be too complex. Sure, there are stairs and stuff like that, but 
in the most cases, except for like the dogs in the depths and stuff like that. You won't be doing much fighting on stairs um, and you don't want to because most weapons suck, obviously. And there are some places where the hallways are so narrow that big weapons will bump into the walls, which will make you cry a little. Um, so level design, not important. Core mechanics is the central part of this game. Um, you can roll off the edge in tons of different places and you will be sad every time. Um, so this is the elevator that I showed you on the uh, the overlay map before, which you open up once you reach the um, the big knight. I don't remember his name, but whatever. So you get back to Firelink Shrine and now that you come from another direction you might want to start exploring more because as you can see here if you run from the elevator straight down to the bonfire here you're more likely to see this place they could have added some sort of point of brightness here just to make players realize that oh once I come from this direction uh, I can start running down here um, it's just a thought um, so another problem that I have with the Dark Souls, which you will see me going for here, is the Covenants, which in my experience aren't really explained at all. Um, so you just run up to this guy. I should have done this before, but I didn't. So I talk to him and you get a coin with no real description and then you talk to him and you join the covenant. Abandons former covenant. So it really doesn't tell you anything at all. And then I say yes, so I become holy. And then I have no idea. He becomes happy and shares his miracles. As far as I know, there is no way to see what a covenant actually does. And I know that there are um, like things happen to you if you break your covenant and when you don't know the rules uh, it's kind of hard to stay away from so uh, yeah the covenant system in Dark Souls is really weird in my opinion um, other people might disagree but I'm not really a fan of it there is tons of different things that aren't really explained and you have to go out of the game to find out how, how they actually work or you have to do a lot of testing on your own uh, so the last part here I'll be talking about is the weight system. So as you can see here I'm not wearing any pants and I'm not wearing any helmet and um, yeah I did pretty quick rolls and then once you start putting on items you do slower and slower rolls until you really can't roll at all you just do a weird sort of jumping to the side thingy where you will likely die. Um, yeah, um, I'll just kill that guy. Ignore him. So I put on a few more pieces. I put on extra weapons just to get even heavier. Like being heavy makes um, a total amount of sense. Um, you're supposed to behave like this in my opinion. The problem is that the breakpoints for these uh, uh, levels of different roles basically because that's mostly what they affect some sort of stamina regeneration as well but the breakpoints for these are the equip load here so 75% you do the jumping to the side thingy 50% you do a pretty good roll 25% uh, you do the super fast roll and then below 25% there are actually additional levels of uh, rolling speed. So as you can see here, it's pretty fast. If I remove everything, you will be even faster. So you can do super fast backflips and stuff like that. Now this isn't explained anywhere in the game. I actually got told by a friend where the breakpoints were and after that I found a video on YouTube describing the additional levels that go like when you have zero, uh, the super fast ones. 
so in my opinion this whoops I just restarted the video but yeah in my opinion describing the um, the weight levels would be super important in the game because that's pretty much aside from the combat that's pretty much the most important mechanic in the game just make the figures change color at the breakpoints something like that it doesn't have to be complicated just show the player what you want to do or what you want them to know like uh, white below 25% or the super fast levels uh, then green then orange then red for instance it's it doesn't have to be complicated just let the player know what you want them to do and add a few descriptions for the covenants as well as remove some of the one-off tricks in my opinion and you'd have a maybe not a super game but a little bit better um, so this has been Dark Souls uh, my next video will be uh, on refining the level design that I did in my previous video. So, hope you like this and thank you for watching.